Roberta Finley's Tenement was released in 1985, it delivered a shock to the system of moviegoers and society alike. The crack epidemic was rocking New York City in late 84 and early 85. Urban decay was a filthy, shining beacon of the social decay riddled throughout the city. Finley's movie is ultra-violent, reflecting the violent deterioration of her city. One of the few movies to receive an X rating solely for its violence. There's really little redeeming about Tenement. It's a raw, vicious, and horrific piece of cinema. Not a single punch is pulled. The plot concerns a sadistic gang who, upon being evicted by police from a tenement block of apartments where they were squatting, return to take revenge on the landlord and all the innocent tenants inside the building. What's interesting is this hardcore horror movie that were it released two decades later probably would have been labeled torture porn, makes a genuine socio-political statement. Other similar movies feel mean. While Tenement is ruthlessly nasty, it doesn't feel mean. It feels angry, like Finley was raging behind the camera, urging on the worst aspects of fictional humanity in order to mirror the real-life struggle humanity was experiencing in the streets of New York City. Some joker is going to come walking along here, hear a voice coming out of a basket and say, this will go great in my basement. And there goes the talking litter basket. The plot of the film feels like the last house on the left transposed from a middle-class house in the woods to a slum apartment building in a neighborhood where the poor are heaped on top of those even poorer, in which live struggling addicts, sex workers, the working poor, and other socio-economically disadvantaged people of various races. In a way, it feels like Finley made a human version of George A. Romero's Night of the Living Dead, paralleling its protagonist, Ben, played by Dwayne Jones, with Sam Washington, played by Joe Lynn in Tenement. Two black men forced into playing the role of hero, caught in a claustrophobic environment, protecting themselves and others from an invading horde of outsiders. Following through on the cinematic parallel, Finley zombies take the form of humans who may as well be the walking dead, void of emotion or concern for the living people inside the apartment building, only focused on killing. Through this comparison to Romero's zombie masterpiece, we see how a large theme is the idea of people from different backgrounds coming together to work against an exterior threat. With the apartment building setting, Finley's movie illustrates the modern divisions between people in cities. As the tenants fight off the gang, they bicker and fight amongst themselves, just like the people barricaded in the house throughout Night of the Living Dead. During normal times, the people in this building are divided. Washington himself says he never wanted to have anything to do with you people. Yet they come together under threat of violence as their communal home is infiltrated. This is Finley's hardcore horror response to society, unwilling to accept the social decay of the 1970s and 1980s in New York City. These tenants taking their own revenge against the gang and brutally fighting them off is a symbolic reclamation of the city by its citizens. Well, how bad is crime on the subways? Today, police say the robbers were getting robbed. Police say that Garnell Thompson stole almost $1,300 in cash and jewelry from passengers on a J train in Brooklyn. Passengers chased him off the train at Hughes Street and caught him. While he was penned down, police say that Julio Malava went through his pockets and stole the jewelry. Social decay isn't only evident in the gang's attack. The deterioration of New York City is seen in all social aspects of the story. One of the most immediate is the sleazy owner of the building, Rojas, played by Larry Lara, who does help to defend the building later, but is set apart from the tenants due to his slumlord attitude. As the landlord slash slumlord, he's technically one of the bourgeois class, making money off people while letting them live in nasty conditions. But he's not the worst in Tenement. Finley doesn't shy away from presenting the NYPD as incompetent and inefficient in their jobs as protectors of the city. They arrest the gang initially at the beginning of the film, only to let them back out on the streets an hour later. 
One of the gang members laughs and says, It's got laws that protect us, you know? <laughs> The police do nothing to fully protect the tenants from repercussions. This goes back to the idea of a community fighting as one. In the absence of state institutions, such as the cops, who actually protect those they're supposed to protect, it's left to the individual citizens to come together in solidarity against the elements of decay tearing them and their city apart. Regardless, law and order can't help these tenants. Like vermin, they're pervasive, ruinous entities, not drug dealers or users, genuine psychopaths with no regard for individuals or society as a whole, keep on coming back, and each time they get worse. An old woman living in the building remarks, if you get rid of one gang, another just takes its place. The best thing Finley does is make sure there's no binary of good versus bad and how the characters are representative of real life. Another movie might make all the tenants perfect upstanding citizens. Tenement shows people in a grey area doing things necessary to survive because of their socio-economic conditions. And the gang aren't even portrayed as drug dealers either. They do drugs, but they're simply too violent for society. Finley avoids passing any judgment in the film on people who do or sell drugs. Both the gang and some tenants indulge in cocaine, heroin, and alcohol, or make money from sex work, etc. Finley knows the truth of the streets, having grown up in a tenement house similar to the one depicted here. She knows the reality of life in the lower middle class to the lives of those even lower, and presents it with honesty. Shocking, unfettered realism is used to make a point about the state of NYC and other cities at the time this was made. An ultra-violent scene in which one tenant, Viona, played by Retta Hughes, is raped and murdered is actually based on the tragic case of Kitty Genovese. In March of 1964, Miss Genovese was stabbed and raped, eventually dying at Kew Gardens just outside her apartment building. Most who heard or saw any of the attack did not call the police until it was far too late, and those who actually did had their calls ignored by the cops. So you can see how this real-life piece of history fits very disturbingly well in Finley's film. The drug so powerful it will empty the money from your pockets, make you sell the watch off your wrist, the clothes off your back. I'll kill your mother. The 1980s in America was a perfect decade for tenements. Wall Street was thriving while half of the city and the country were struggling to even make ends meet, and many others weren't even able to do that. The Guardian Angels had been around for six years, though Finley's fictional slum building is one place they probably wouldn't have even dared to go. New York City was an absolute mess from top to bottom. The urban decay helped put a spotlight on social decay in the city, further evident in all the city and state's institutions failing the people they were supposed to be helping, from the justice system to the police themselves. Finley shows an environment as devastated as the people living in it. The violence on either side is indicative of a rage in the lower classes. Yes, they're forced to defend themselves. That violence is as much a cry for help as it is a war cry. Not everybody's going to enjoy Tenement. Even some horror lovers will hate it. The whole film is gratuitous. Its most brutal of scenes are played out to excruciating length, whether depicting the sexual assault of Leona, or people gruesomely overdosing on rat poison. Might surprise certain viewers that this was directed by a woman, though those who know Finley will find it no surprise whatsoever. It's not even a well-acted movie either. But none of that changes how directly the overall theme attacks a real-life subject. You can feel a palpable anger coming off Tenement in every last scene, and sometimes, just sometimes, that's powerful enough.